What's up, guys? I am James Bainey, and I am here with Kyle Larson, and we are getting ready to do a review and spoiler-filled book discussion on Alphabet Squadron Shadowfall. Stick around. All right, man, we're back yet again. We're doing the book discussions thing. Um, How have you been? I've been pretty good, all things considered, but yeah, yeah, this was, uh, this was quite a read. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it was, well, it was a sprint, we'll get but into it felt like details, a marathon, but... and it was a sprint. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to get into the details of, uh, of the book, but that is basically, like, the quickest summary of, man, the, the details, like, uh, we'll, we'll get into here in a few minutes, but, uh, but I'm glad that you're good. I, too, have been hanging out. <laughs> Good. Yeah, just yeah, waiting for ask. a book yeah. feels like it's been a little bit of a drought uh but i'm glad to have it back and we got we got other books on the way too w- what's up next um dark myths probably free which fall is right? the george mon oh yeah that's uh, right follow up and then later this summer i believe in august uh we have free fall which is the poe dameron book which i'm actually reading right now which i oh, really good. like it so far um so but i had to take a little break from that to dive in t- to take the shadow fall so <laughs> yeah <laughs> to take the shadow <laughs> so a little light um, summer reading yep all right well we are here to talk about shadow fall so let's do it now this book was released on june 23rd 2020 uh it was written by alexander freed uh read by carol monda and it was published by del rey and random house audio does the audiobook uh now the timeline for this book is very important right uh it's right after return of the jedi Uh, It's before the Aftermath series uh, and uh, the Battle of Jakku and all that. And it likely is going to be taking place roughly about the same time as the upcoming video game, Squadrons. I say upcoming if it's already out and you're watching this video. Squadrons. Um, Hope you enjoy. (laughs) Yeah. So let's get started right away on our initial thoughts and score. Kyle, I'm going to get you started uh, doing this first. What, What were your initial thoughts of the book and what did you rate it? So I thought of the book, like, by the time I was done with the book, I felt like I had just finished putting together a extremely complicated jigsaw puzzle. But when you can finally see the picture and everything, you're Mm -hmm. like, wow, that's quite, that's quite a picture. And that's quite a story. So I really did like the story. Um, I kind of, you know, got lost in a little bit of the writing and I gave it a, a six out of 10, which when you read my review, please let please read that I've kind of changed up my scoring with this book, which is, um, it's a, it's a good book. I, I liked it. You know, it didn't blow my mind or anything, but I, I enjoyed the, the story, um, the characters. And then by the end of it, I was, I'm very, very curious to see, um, how Freed concludes this trilogy. What about you? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So I, I think that is just the perfect analogy. This book is the puzzle. It's like you, the whole time you are just fighting through it, trying to figure out how all these things come together. And it's not like a, a murder mystery. Like how do all the pieces come together? It's, it's literally like you don't, it's, it's hard to understand the different characters and who's even in the room and what planet they're on and where they're at and what ship they're in and who's talking. And there's a lot of these little components that we'll get into here in a second. Um, but once you see that big picture, you're right. It's like, man, this actually is a really good story. It just is really hard to get through. So I kind of given it two separate scores in a weird way. So like the real score of this book for me personally, where it, where it fits into everything else, 6.3. Um, okay. and, uh, remembering our score system is kind of like a five is whatever, Uh, to us and anything below a five is when we started to dislike the book so 6.3 means i still liked it but it's it's hanging on (laughs) to to passing right yeah um because it because it's just so thick the other thing that i said about the the kind of like the other like fake score is like if you get into the book and you're willing to take the dive, the story's good and it's fun and you you really feel invested into the characters, that would be like an 8.5 to me. Um, we're going to talk more about what we think uh, of the book, but that that's it. Uh, he gave it a, you gave it a 6, right? Mm-hmm. And I did 6.3. Um where where is this book going though uh obviously this one's pretty easy uh alphabet squadron three coming up right 
Squadrons, uh, the video game, and Aftermath. Uh, we kind of talked about that a second ago. That's where it takes place. That is the big picture to this this book. Is um, anything right outside of it is going to be those stories, uh, and also uh, Shattered em- Shattered Empire, right? The comic series as well. Yeah, yeah, that could that could definitely yeah. fall into it as well. So, all right. So then, kick us off. Uh, what was your favorite part of the book, Kyle? This is so, this spoilers from this point on. Yeah, yeah, li- lots of spoilers. Spoilers we're, from we're, this point on. We have not we spoiled it yet. Getting in the spoilers, so yes. Um, you know, it's really if I could pick one, like it's it's more like an aspect of the book that I I really liked mm-hmm. how they kind of because in the original in Alphabet Squadron, the Force and the Jedi were pretty much not even mentioned at all, and they're kind of here a little bit. Not the Jedi, but. Um, the force is here mm-hmm. and we're kind of hearing and seeing how other beings um, are experiencing the force with this cult they're called the children of the empty sun um, so I really like that aspect and I liked how Chas fit into that because you meet her as a person you you learn it from her past that she's very cynical of cults because she was in one that was not uh, a very nice it was more somebody trying to use um, the idea of spirituality and religion as a control mechanism um, which oftentimes happens in cults um, so this one she's very skeptical of but the way that she has this uh, you know she's trying to escape the entire time and it's not necessarily like if by the the end of her time in this cult that she's like oh I've you know I've seen everything but you know you do kind of get the sense that maybe there's been kind of these little seeds about you know spirituality and the force that were kind of you know that that might be germinating in her and in her mind and then also we have this sith you know i guess we can just talk about it since we're talking about spoilers but Mm -hmm. um erica is in a very very dark place in this book especially in the second half and she finds this sith temple that and we'll go into this later but she has to do some pretty grueling things um to get access to it And I thought that that was really interesting, her kind of journey into darkness and reliving a lot of these really horrific moments in her life. And a lot of the things actually brought her to Alphabet Squadron um, to get access to this temple that gets her, uh, you know, gets her off uh, out of a very um, precarious situation. So I I really liked those two aspects of the book, um, you know, and yeah, I guess that would be it. You know, there were there are a lot of great scenes and a lot of great moments in this book. Um, but yeah, those two really stood I, out I, I definitely agree. Like you were kind of describing, you know, Ch- Chess's backstory, the history of why the cult is important. Um, these, these books, the first one and this one as well, really hammer home, um, every one of the characters as like five different types of people. Obviously they fly different ships. You know, this one flies an A wing, a B wing, an X wing, a Y wing. And, um, what am I missing? An X-Wing, right? An X-Wing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or a U-Wing. Maybe I didn't say the U-Wing. Um, but uh, but they're all, they all have their different personalities, and I think that's, that's one thing that this book does a lot is really, really dives into each one of the characters so that you, you understand it. I think that's what they're trying to drive home, and that the whole, the whole story is just the backdrop – to let me tell you a story about Chaz Nachatic. Let me tell mm-hmm. you a story about Nath Tenson, you know, or Will Lark. Um, the only one really kind of, oh, actually, no, I take that back. I was going to say the only one really missing is, is Kairos here because she spends a lot of time in the thing. But the backstory of Kairos and uh, Karen, yeah. uh, who is their squad leader, that's my favorite part of the book. So I we're like on favorite part, too. favorite thing right now. Karen, um, is is on deathbed right and he is telling Erica the story of how he became where he is now right he was in that detention camp he uh had to make friends with and the way they describe this is just like you know Nazi concentration camp right they just they make you walk to your torture chamber and only once a day you see like one other person you know what I mean and that just that split second you see them is like the human connection that gets you through and the the whole story of that being um a character that they they never dove into so it's huge payoff in this book they never dive into Kairos at all really in the first book she's just 
a mysterious person that you're not supposed to know anything about her back backstory. This book, they tell it to you all. Like she was in that concentration camp with them. They had that other guy who was, so there was like the three of them. And then he was killed in the process of, uh, rebuilding the torture droid and, uh, the torture droid reprogramming. I mean, um, became kind of the replacement for that guy. So they see it as like a new version of him and, and, I don't know. It's like just that whole story um, of how the three of them are basically like a tripod. And that's including this like torture droid that we know from a new hope, you know, Mm -hmm. and we see in the Mandalorian, like getting ready to, uh, you know, shoot up uh, baby Yoda. Um, But, but that understanding of what uh, the torture droid means to Karen. And then later in the book, when you find out that that torture droid has uh, basically long story short, like the real technical version of it is, you know, it, it was, it was losing its memory and it was unable to like, uh, you know, process the way that it was supposed to as a droid, as a computer. Right. But the right. reality of it is now that you have this humanity to that droid, it's, it's a, it's a person going through dementia yeah. and it's a person that like, um, almost like in a, like in a zombie movie, like right now, you know, them as a human, they get bit and they start slowly following, falling into it. And then when you realize that that person is gone and that torture droid had actually been, uh, punishing her for her crimes. And that's how all that he saw her as, um, she has to she has to kill it she has to take it out and then she goes back to karen and is like uh he's like where's the droid what happened to you know this other person that is my emotional tripod and she she doesn't tell him the truth and it's just yeah. it's so heartbreaking it's it's almost like um like he lost a child and uh he's like or she she describes it in a white lie you know and it's just yeah that whole scenario to me is like that to me was like the pivot not the pivot the pinnacle of the book uh, yeah. in my personal opinion but um that's that's that was my favorite part um but like we said earlier the the book as a whole is is rough to get through so start us off on the discussion like what do you what do you think about this book and and the writing style of it well um, we spoke about this and, and, you know, the, the jigsaw puzzle, you know, comparison as well. Um, but you know, Freed is it, first of all, if, if he's watching, he is a very good writer. Um, and, but one of the things is that sometimes simple actions, you know, like I'm picking up a blaster, I'm, or, you know, so-and-so is picking up a blaster and they fired it and killed so-and-so, you know, it doesn't have to be that simple, but he gets into very, very elaborate descriptions that almost make it more hard to visualize like what what the characters mm-hmm. are actually doing and again you know he's a great writer but sometimes like all you need to do is say like they walked through the door you don't need to be like yes. you know they opened you know this behemoth oak you know like that kind of thing and that's where i found myself getting lost a lot and i don't and i i remember being lost a lot during you know the first book alphabet squadron but i could never really put my finger on why i was getting lost and having spoken to you and a few other fans who have read that book too you know some people didn't even finish it because you know you just get kind of caught up in that um so that was you know i, I again like the story ended up being really good. And I do, I do enjoy the story much more than alphabet squadron. I did like that book as well, Mm -hmm. but this, you know, definitely it doesn't have to spend as much time building this cohesion between the unit. When you meet them there, there it's a bit of a fragile cohesion, but it is there. Um, and you watch that fracture throughout the book. Um, and kind of, it actually doesn't really come back together, but I, I really think that it's interesting how at the same time, like the strength of the book is that he's delving into these characters. But a lot of times for me as a reader that sometimes that it became overexposure in a way. And I think I wrote this in my mm-hmm. review too. Sometimes that was actually the weakness of a lot of chapters is that he was spending a lot of time on, on certain characters when you're like, you know, we kind of needed to get back to the action. So that was, yeah. 
you know um yeah uh, so those are, you alexander know, freed yeah also wrote um battlefront twilight company yes. yeah um and then he also wrote the first alphabet squadron and i read uh twilight company and i remember getting all the way through the book uh and just going i couldn't tell you what happened um and i remember describing it as it felt like a lot of people uh a lot of details uh in far of like military speak and jargon and and things like that it, it finds you very hard to place where you're at um and what's going on in the story uh you just kind of feel like you're reading uh like a manual or something right yeah yeah um then when alphabet squadron came out i was like okay it's from the same person <laughs> Let me see. Let me see how I feel about this one. And I, I left Alphabet Squadron feeling the exact same way. I barely could tell you what what even happened in the book. But since they said they were going to be doing two more Alphabet Squadron books, I was like, let me figure it out. And I recommended this uh, to our patrons. Um, you know the resistance officers that we have. Mm. I said, hey, if you are thinking about getting into Alphabet Squadron go get a basis for these characters first, like understand yeah. who the story's about. What, what is the basic story? What are you trying to do and get a broader picture before you even enter into the thing and feel free to even spoil the book. Just understand what is the story? What's the big picture? And then you'll start to get this understanding of like, you know, like you were saying, like just picking up a blaster, like just know that the scene is he picks up a blaster and then listen to it and you'll realize how well described and how how many emotional things happen during that process. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. such a good book. The only problem is it seems very often like Alexander Freed is missing like the big picture and the, the, the key points that just basically tell you what's happening this is what's happening but you kind of have to put all of that together and it's it's a it's a job it's a it's a piece of work to get through and to chew through but when you get it and your puzzle analogy it's perfect like you look back and you step at the whole thing and you're like man this is crazy all these different characters and how they're coming together and all their different personalities it feels like aftermath which when i read aftermath i said it feels like rebels right this book to me is like picture alphabet squadron as like zeb in an a-wing sabine in a y-wing right kanan Mm. in an x-wing hera in a u-wing like once you picture it's these different people from different walks of life coming together and figuring themselves out you it it makes the book a lot easier to get through and i i feel like that's probably the biggest thing is like understand the story first read read the book and then on it like maybe a second through or a leaf through or re-listen to specific sections all of the details fall into place. You're like, Oh, I'm, I get it now. Like, and I think it really helped me and you going through this book together. Cause yeah. every time we would get to like chapter 12, I'd be like, yo, so, so help me out here. Like what just happened in that chapter? And we, we would sort it out together. Yeah. Um, I, I, th- I think, you know, he, he was going to this place and then he did the thing and no, no, no. I think he was already there. And, we and it's a chew but you know it's worth it in the end um, yeah yeah what what else what else do you think because because i said this to you at one point and i think you agreed is that i really strongly feel like this story would be better if it was a ya novel yeah the the ya novel um i feel like you know and and he also did um he did the novelization to rogue one which i haven't read um but oh, he right. um I almost feel like this book would be better as like a comic, like a series, like an ongoing series or something, because like, you know, he obviously like he wants you to visualize what you're seeing, but because these descriptions become so dense and there's so many of them on one page, you know, you're at least you're making the reader work really, really hard in my opinion. Whereas like, you know, 
in an author's job should be to kind of like take the reader by the hand and yeah they, they do have to work they do have to to think but it shouldn't have to be like okay i need to go back three pages to reread that because i don't know who yeah. died i don't know who did this or did what um so like that's you know kind of the problem that i kept running into i think when we talked because we talked several times over this weekend of, of reading this book mm-hmm. um that one of the things we both said is that his his reading is just, it's just very hard to visualize sometimes um and and so that is you know that that's kind of like the again like you know i'm making a lot of criticisms here but i agree with you too like it's you know once you kind of get to the end of this book and i think i said this in my review too like i'm going to be the first person to like try to get my hands on the third one when that comes out cuz i'm yeah. i i want to know what happens and you know, he yeah, did definitely do at it. this point too. Oh yeah, you know we're and, we're two in. Like we got to know yeah. how this, and the book ends with such a, a plot twist. Like we uh, we you know we we kind of talked about it on our other video that kind of explains like what happened in Alpha in uh, Shadowfall, but uh, we haven't really spoke on that too. Is that this book is like a huge cliffhanger? So yeah, yeah. We're, we're super anxious for the next one. Yeah, indeed, I, and and I you know I cared about all these characters by the end. Like I you know I'm not. Mm-hmm. I really, I was, I kind of gravitated more toward Chas's story because, you know, she's, she's in, she goes through so much volatility in terms of like, she's just so frustrated with, you know, being in such dire situation. She, you know, we learned that she's had feelings for, for Erica, Erica at some point. Um, and she's like kind of dealing with those while also learning that like, you know, Erica is, you know, essentially had, has been lying to them all along. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and then that, that spiritual side of things too. But I, you know, I, I, I focused on her a lot, but at the same time, by the end of it, in the, uh, especially the last um, chapter or two, when the battle's really raging on, you know, that's when I felt like everything started to kind of click. And I was really, really concerned for the well being of, of the other characters as well. Um, so, uh, you know, he did a good job of, of really this time and i think also having uh soren in the story soren keys um because alphabet squadrons the first book it was there was no real antagonist i mean there kind of was with nurus mm-hmm. who was the grandmother but she was very you know it was a very clinical kind of villain um and he's he's very much like uh, i kept thinking like he's somebody who kind of want he he's not really i mean he's he's in the empire because he needs to be there right now but he kind of just wants to watch the galaxy burn in a way like he's he's very determined to not only just hurt the republic and get revenge but also he's really really determined to hurt uh harris and doula which is is kind of a you know he he doesn't come off like that in the first book you think maybe this guy has like a streak of virtue but in this book he is just like not cool so which actually it makes me think you know that one of the things I wrote down here was that this book is a Wikipedia writer's worst nightmare. <laughs> and yeah. the reason I say that is because you use the word dense. And I think that's perfect. It's like for every two or three new ships that are detailed or new blasters or new planets or new characters, only like one of those characters or ships or weapons are going to be relevant to the major story so sometimes it's just kind of like um you know your main character like erica walked into a room and standing over there was generals general supreme chancellor of the fourth republic bob saget (laughs) you know or whatever right who also goes by robert (laughs) yeah who exactly and and that's that's the other point too is that every one of the characters in the game in the book has like at least at least two names like that's that's another thing so it's like there's shadow wing right but they're also called the 204th imperial tie fighter squadron or whatever you know yeah um sometimes they call the character irica sometimes they call her quell sometimes they call him nath Sometimes they call him Tenzent, which is his last name. Yes. Sometimes it's Will. Sometimes it's Lark. Sometimes it's Karen. Sometimes it's Aiden, right? Sometimes it's yeah. the Imperial Torture Droid, and sometimes it's ITO. And 
and when you're even talking about sometimes the just the description of a character like i said they refer to it as the imperial torture droid but it's been reprogrammed so and you're you're supposed to remember that it's been reprogrammed so sometimes if you miss that detail of it being reprogrammed you just hear Impor- imperial torture droid is how they're describing the reprogrammed imperial torture droid and it may it confuses you cuz now you think there's a different droid in the room you know yeah. it, it that's the thing is like that like i said she'll walk into a room and there's imperial of the 4th district bob saget over there and then she'll describe like you know, or Alexander, I say, uh, but I was from Erica's point of view. Mm-hmm. Describe all these other like new drinks, new worlds. Sometimes even like when Chas is listening to music, he goes into detail about the um, new planets and species that are writing the music. Like it's yeah, um, you know, B- Billab- Billabong planet, uh, but it's like Billabong rap. You know, it's like, I don't know what Billabong is, but now I'm trying to, like, picture, is that a species? Is that a planet? Anyway, he's already given three more details to other things. He is a massive world builder. So I feel yes. like when you're when you're going through, it's not like, okay, so this page is basically story. There's going to be, like, ten new things on that page, every page of the book. It's, it's, that's why dense, I think, is a immensely useful word in this in this case to describe the book. Yes, yes, indeed. And, you know, and be warned too. like, you know, pe- people like I, I kind of said in, in my reviews, like, you know, don't even I wouldn't even try this without reading Alphabet Squadron first. Um, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. like, don't even don't even try it. <laughs> um, so it's just, um, yeah, you, there's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? uh to the discussion as far as like how you felt about the book or like you know looking back on it um at the end of the road here's the story what do you think um you know i i I feel pretty good about like about what we said but i am you know again as you know as critical as we have been about like the writing style Mm -hmm. um you know i i do i i am really excited and i did feel very satisfied by the end of this book too as much as you know we we had to kind of check our notes and check in with one another. Yeah. Um, I did feel like there was a, a payoff at the end of this book too. And, you know, the fact that they're putting Quell in a Sith, uh, like Sith relic fighter, and now she's back with the empire. And we know that the, the Sentinel of Palpatine is there. And we know that yeah. some form of Palpatine is out in the unknown regions and stuff. It's, it's very intriguing. Like, you know, maybe this won't directly have like a through line to everything, but you know, it, I think it's a very intriguing setup. So, yeah, I agree. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention, and uh, this was the case for Alphabet Squadron, the original too, is I feel like the audiobook added um, music that is non Star Wars music. And mm. it was the first time I think any of the books, and I could be wrong on that, but I feel like it was the first time that they didn't just use a bunch of John Williams music in the background. Um, this to me had uh, new songs and in a lot of cases, songs that I felt started to become their own theme. Uh, like oh. at the end of the book, it was the, the music there was this original music that was really uh, giving the, the weight of the final battle. And oftentimes there would be this, um, this like lick that to me and, and anybody wants to go into more detail or tell me exactly what I'm listening to. But to me, it sounded like I'm listening to the alphabet squadron theme. And, uh, so it was kind of cool. Cause it was like a reoccurring, yeah. um, piece of music just for this book a- alone. And uh, I don't know where I could get that book or, or that music, I mean, or even if they'll ever release it. But um, I would love to be able to listen to that music just because I, I think it is one of those things that will, like, immediately take you back to the book. And you're like, man, that was a good book, you know, now that now that I have spent some time with it. So um, so yeah. I think that, that's about it. Um, that's cool. That's really cool. I had no idea. Um, yeah. Um, be interesting to look so, at the Audible description and stuff. 
yeah and see if they says like music by uh mm-hmm. john williams and because they do use the original john Mi- williams music as well but um well that's it that's it for uh this book discussion on alphabet squadron shadow fall um if you haven't before we we've done this for a number of other books in the past and we'll hopefully continue to do more of them um also if you did want to uh learn a little bit more about this particular book we also have another video up on the channel that just kind of explains what happened in this book shadowfall we just kind of go point by point by point uh and it's all spoilery just kind of tells you the story of the book so you can kind of get through it in about 15 minutes um other than that uh i think um that's that's about it uh for this particular discussion um where can people find you online i'm on twitter uh kyle d larson is my handle d is in dog um and then i'm also contributing pretty much weekly to star wars news net whether that's a usually mm-hmm. it's a comic book review and then there's also book reviews there's a, a fairly non-spoiler book review of shadow fall up on the website i mean check it out for sure but um it covers a lot of the same ground and i i you know talk a little bit more about you know like freed's writing style and and some of the character things that i like too so mm-hmm. um but yeah how about you Where can uh, find me you? can find me on <laughs> twitter and instagram at meyer trunks and pretty regularly on uh the resistance broadcast as well we do two episodes a week uh covering news discussion we play games sometimes uh we speculate a lot uh, and that's with john and Lacey. and uh like i said those are pretty regular twice a week and uh come and join us and make sure you subscribe to the channel um because this is yeah, a proud YouTube. patron here watch yeah. the resistance oh, yeah. for sure <laughs> yeah they do a great job um yeah this is a this is a kind of a youtube exclusive so make sure you subscribe like comment uh your thoughts on uh shadow fall and uh the book as a whole and until then we'll see you next time see you later bye guys thank you